preprint is generally a complete manuscript that in most cases has been submitted to a journal for publication but is also at the same time posted to a preprint server of which there are several and that just means that the manuscript that's under review at a journal can also be uh, scrutinized by the wider world, comments can be solicited on it. They are permanent records, they're versioned and they're citable and that sounds like a very simple definition but what that means is that we can get that research out much quicker. There's a long history of using preprints in physics. I believe the archive, for example, was founded in 1991 and we use them as an opportunity to publish maybe not fully complete work, but manuscripts that are essentially complete such that they're in the public domain with your name on them, such that you can present them prior to the laborious or perhaps extended process of a full peer review. We view preprints as the principal vehicle for dissemination of the findings, whereas the journal process is a validation of those findings. Preprints are very important to us in as much as science moves quickly, the peer review process often does not move quickly. Uh, so it's, it's very important for us in advertising ourselves and advertising our work that we have a, a definitive document that's in the public domain associated with us such that we can go and present work without having to wait six or nine months for the full published journal. In our group we do a lot of work on health behaviours and that includes things like vaping, use of e-cigarettes. And there's a wide community of vapors who are very engaged with the scientific research that's ongoing. People do comment on preprint from people who have read our preprint and either like it, which is great, or have comments about how we might improve it, or in some cases even have spotted things that we could um, improve on or, or could even be an error. People can read that work and go, actually, I'm doing something similar to that. Wouldn't it be great if we got together? The most recent preprint we published, we had that very thing happen. So we posted the preprint and then two days later another preprint appeared and it was very, very complementary to our work. And what we've ended up doing is we've both submitted at the same time together to a journal and now, hopefully, those two papers are going to come out together. And they are amazingly complementary and it's a collaboration we would never have otherwise gotten. From a personal perspective, the main benefit is that contracts are short. We're always looking for the next job and preprints are a way of getting documents out there perhaps on a seminal piece of work that might take a long time to review uh, and people can pick up that work quickly at a time that's opportune for picking up the next job. Your work is seen and it can be seen by journal editors. So if a journal editor sees your preprint or sees people discussing your preprint on social media or whatever, um, they may get in touch directly and invite the submission. Also preprints are cited in some of our papers if, you know, if relevant and not published yet as papers, uh, preprints can be cited. Um, so there are different ways that we interact with the preprint landscape. There is a number of preprint servers, most of them are free to post uh, and all of them are free to read. Um, BioArchive is one very common one, but there are a number of them. The Center for Open Science has one, Senodo has one, Research Square has another one. Different preprint servers have different levels of scrutiny. In the world of physics, we just have the Archive, which is sort of the definitive preprint server. The process of uploading a preprint at least to the Archive is you can prepare a document, maybe just in Microsoft Word or typically LaTeX, which is the language that we use to produce. Um, I guess slightly nicer looking manuscripts. But then once you have posted a preprint, the authors normally will share it on social media. You see a lot of activity around, around Twitter and Facebook, etc. If they, if they are active preprint posters, they will very often do a whole research thread of what this paper says and when it's published all they do is they retweet this saying now published whatever but actually they already talked about their science at the preprint stage and sometimes they just email it to colleagues to call their attention and seek feedback. There's no filter for inaccuracies or even necessarily bad physics other than it, there is someone casting their eyes over it but it's not full-blown peer review so I wouldn't say there's that much crackpot physics on there, but there's certainly stuff on the archive which is fundamentally unpublishable elsewhere. And often that's a bit of a warning sign. If something's been on the archive for a long time and not published, you're, you're thinking, well, what was wrong with it, such that it could get there, but not into an actual journal. One thing that is one of the biggest criticisms of preprints, because preprints are not peer reviewed, sometimes not all of them are, are correct, or there can be mistakes or unintentional errors. and. Um, and so if media picks up on this and reports as a truth, uh, there can be things that are 
not correct that get amplified and, and percolate over to society, for example. Or well, minor inaccuracies, I guess, are often quite common, but again, they're quite common in journals as well. The community is often very fast to respond to gross inaccuracies, and they're, I guess, the tip, they're the problems that typically prevent something from being published uh, in a bigger journal. Other people are wary because of the scooping issue. So if you post your data there and it's data that is easy to replicate, then anybody could just do it again and submit it to a journal. The danger of being scooped is a concern. And that is one of the huge advantages of publishing on a preprint server is that at least it's still bad to be scooped to the full published article, but at least you weren't scooped to the first version that's in the public domain at all. And I guess it must depend on various, on, you know, from field to field, but we are aware that collaborators are working on more or less the same stuff as us. So we are very keen to get things out quickly on preprint servers at the, at the first opportunity, basically. Journals have had a very interesting response to preprints. Some of them, such as Elsevier, have been buying up a lot of the preprint sort of property. So uh, either preprint servers, for example, or a lot of the peer review services that have arisen around preprints. Other journals for a long time went the other way and said, we don't want you to preprint your work because then you're just plagiarizing yourself and it's not a novel anymore. Certainly, there is a great deal of variety across journals, across editors, in terms of their attitudes to, for example, preprint, but also uh, things like uh, data sharing and code sharing. One of the things that I've tried to do, unsurprisingly, at the journal that I edit, is promote open research practices. So, for example, we're very positive about preprints, and we are, um, with our publisher, setting up a system whereby people can post their manuscript to a preprint server, and it will automatically then be, if they want it to be, submitted to our journal. And that, again, is intended in part as a signal to the community that this is something that we, as a journal, and as a society that supports that journal, feel uh, is important. So there have been already culture changes in the beginning. For example, many journals did not allow preprints to be cited in the reference list. Now most journals do. I think we are moving toward a future in which the, the knowledge dissemination will happen at the preprint stage and the validation and, and the data curation, if you will, will happen at the journal stage. Becoming increasingly a requirement that our work is open access for sure. The final product, as it were, has to be available to Joe Public without being behind a paywall. That's the important thing. Basically because Joe Public has paid for the research, that makes perfect sense. And of course that helps science as well. If there are institutions that might not have the funding to have access to articles behind all these paywalls. People from labs in countries where maybe there isn't that much funding for research, they can now get their work out a bit easier and we're seeing a number of preprint servers that are specific to these kind of countries. So there's a, an Africa archive preprint server, for example, which is focused not only on pushing preprints from Africa, but it promotes African science, which is something that certainly in the Western world we, we tend to forget about, but there's a lot of really cool science being done out there. When you have early career researchers coming into academia who aren't constrained by having been taught a particular way of doing things, many of these open research practices just seem intuitive to them. So they adopt them very quickly and things like posting preprints at the point when you submit a manuscript to a journal have just become the norm in many areas. And that's the point at which I think we'll start to see real culture change follow as these practices become embedded because they will simply become, as these early career researchers become mid-career researchers become senior researchers, these practices will simply be the way in which things are done.